In one of the older videos from a few months ago, I explored this beautiful map, that naturally you can find in the description below, that kind of helps us visualize where exactly the solar system is located in comparison to a lot of other stars and a lot of other objects within a few dozen light years away from planet Earth. And more specifically, there's actually something that you might notice right here that sort of resembles some kind of a hole. And it kind of is a hole. It's known as the local bubble. A relatively large cavity that was most likely created by various supernova that happened within the last 20 million years in the vicinity of the solar system. But the supernova that we don't really know much about. As a matter of fact, we don't really know which stars created them. We also don't really know where the remnants are. But the actual evidence is still there. And the obvious question here is, how exactly did this affect planet Earth and the life on planet Earth? Because it very likely had at least some effect. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries and a recent paper that essentially explores the idea of supernova and their effect, potential effect, on planet Earth. And actually more specifically, it sort of identifies potentially new dangerous types of supernova that we don't really know much about just yet that in theory do pose quite a lot of dangers to our planet and to life on our planet, especially if they happen in relative vicinity. And in some sense, this is actually a pretty good timing for this particular paper because of what just happened not so long ago from when I'm making this video. The detection of the brightest and the most powerful gamma ray burst we've ever experienced. Something that was so powerful that it actually had the effect on planet Earth and was detected by various instruments on the planet for at least a few minutes to possibly even a few hours. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. And this happened approximately 2 billion light years away from us, in a completely different galaxy very, very far away. So imagine if this happened much closer. Now these particular events are kind of rare, and we've discussed this in that video, so we have nothing to worry about in this case, but there are still some supernova that we actually don't really understand very well, especially supernova that occur around really massive stars that over time accumulated huge amounts of gas around them, creating shells and shells that sort of cover the star, but then also create additional powerful effects observable from a distance. And that's what the scientists explore in the paper right here. X-ray luminous supernova threats to terrestrial biospheres. Definitely a catchy title and definitely something that might be worth exploring after all. But I guess before we start, it's also important to understand that generally supernova are kind of rare. Even the ones that are very far away from us in other galaxies don't really happen very often. And so the ones closer to us are going to be even more rare. But in the last few millions of years, they most likely happened in the vicinity of planet Earth. And there's actually been quite a few papers trying to explore this idea with at least one proposition suggesting that there was something major happening within approximately 160 light years away from planet Earth and it very likely occurred about 2.6 million years ago. We've discussed this a few years ago, but this particular paper explores this in more detail going as far as suggesting that the Pliocene ended when the supernova very likely changed planet Earth and seems to have even caused an extinction event that specifically affected marine megafauna, very large fish, and lots of different animals living in the water, with quite a lot of large marine species disappearing in just a few thousands of years. But for now it's just really an assumption. An assumption based on some evidence, with some other evidence coming from various deposits that seem to have very specific isotopes that we believe are produced during supernova. For example, the presence of iron-60 radioactive isotopes that only have a half-life of 2.6 million years. Something that was discovered in various deposits in various oceans around the planet dating to approximately 2.5 million years ago. While also discovering some other isotopes, such as manganese-53, that we almost certainly believe can only be created in supernova events. But this is actually the interesting part, because when it comes to supernova, they do have very different effects at very different times. And this is something that we need to learn more about and something we need to understand as well. For example, that initial flash that produces quite a lot of gamma rays generally does not have much effect. Okay, this one definitely did, but this is more of an exception to the rule. Also, not all of them will produce gamma rays, and some of them will only end up producing X-rays. But the thing is, depending on the amount of hydrogen gas and various other gas around the star, in some cases, if there's a really large cloud of gas present around the star, the extremely powerful radiation coming from the supernova is going to interact with a dense circumstellar medium and result in a delayed production of a huge amount of X-rays. Way more than would be produced otherwise if there was no gas present or if it was in a less dense environment. And the thing is, this would actually happen way, way after, possibly months or even years after. 
And so even though the outburst might happen today, we're not going to experience this until a few years later. And in this case, the distance from the Sun starts to matter quite a lot. If this happens within approximately 100 light years away from the solar system, with this being approximately 50 light years across, the scientists believe that the amount of X-rays produced in these supernova is actually going to be lethal. Lethal in the sense that as they arrive to planet Earth, they're going to interact with a lot of different particles in the stratosphere and end up stripping the ozone layer from the planet completely. And because of this, the life on the planet will become completely exposed to a lot of different other radiation that can actually damage and destroy various life because it's no longer protected from, for example, the UV light. And that's not even the end of the effects of this particular supernova. A lot of supernova also result in the production of huge amounts of cosmic rays. So all of this iron and manganese we're finding in various deposits, all of this came hundreds or even thousands of years later. As various, very highly charged particles traveled away from the supernova, increasing the amount of cosmic rays reaching the surface, once again depleting the ozone layer even more, but this time for a much longer period of time, but also bombarding the surface with an increased amount of muon radiation, thus increasing the chance for extinction even more. And in this case, when this particular event arrives to planet Earth, really depends on the distance and of course on the traveling speed of those cosmic rays. They don't necessarily travel at the same speed and definitely below the speed of light. But if it happens within approximately 160 light years away from us, it would very likely be extremely dangerous dramatically affecting the biosphere of planet Earth. But the thing is, it's not actually going to destroy or kill everything. It's not an event that's going to sterilize everything. As a matter of fact, it might be quite the opposite. It might encourage mutation and thus encourage evolution. Simply through the radiation effects on the DNA of various species living in different conditions. And so these very sudden mutation events, especially events when a lot of life suddenly changed dramatically, at least in theory, could have been caused by a supernova happening within approximately 160 light years away from planet Earth. Something that has been proposed several times in various papers. Now obviously this is not a conclusive theory yet, but it is an interesting proposition. But the scientists in this paper went a little bit further. They also took a look at 31 known supernova to us that were actively studied and discovered in the last few decades, and classified them in terms of hazard based on the total amount of X-rays emitted during these events. And surprisingly, one of the closest and the most iconic supernova, SM 1987A, the event that we've discussed in many previous videos you can find in the description, was apparently one of the safest ones and was only potentially dangerous to any kind of life within approximately one light year away from the supernova itself. As a matter of fact, it's basically on the bottom of the list. But there are obviously some other supernova that were a lot more dangerous. As a matter of fact, if you look at the top of the table, this supernova that happened about 57 million light years away from us in a galaxy known as NGC 4179, detected in 2006, was the most dangerous found so far. It would be lethal within approximately 30 light years because it created so much X-ray radiation that it would dramatically change the atmosphere of any nearby planet in that particular vicinity. And even though in terms of power it wasn't really that much more powerful than a lot of other supernova, in terms of the energy emitted in the X-rays, it was 500,000 times more powerful than the one that happened right here in 1987. Which basically means that supernova in general seem to be very different depending on the environment around the star that explodes. And specifically, if there is a lot of gas and it's very dense, it seems to actually create a lot more dangerous radiation. Which of course implies that centers of galaxies are probably not going to be very friendly for complex life. But the other thing you might notice from this table is that the majority of very powerful supernova are all type 2, or to be more specific, type 2n. Unlike type 1 supernova that happened when a white dwarf explodes, Type 2 happened when a much more massive star, such as for example Betelgeuse, explodes leaving behind a neutron star or sometimes a black hole. But in the case of a Type 2n supernova, it also has quite a huge amount of gas, ionized gas, around it, which then interacts with all of these emissions and produces all of these X-rays. But what sort of a star results in these types of supernova is still a kind of a mystery to us and we still do not know exactly which stars end up in what type of Type 2 supernova. But because these supernova are probably going to be the most dangerous we'll ever discover, it's an important question to try to answer, simply because it's sort of important for us to know what affected planet Earth in the past and what might affect it in the future. Although at the moment, in our vicinity, there are no massive stars that are big enough and dangerous enough to create any of this for the next few thousands of years. 
So in that sense, we're probably more or less safe. Even if a star like Betelgeuse cools supernova, it's actually pretty far away. It's several hundred light years away from us, so even if it produces X-rays, they're not going to be affecting us that much. But the main point of the research is really to kind of raise awareness, to help us understand that supernova do come in different shapes and sizes, and certain supernova can be a lot more dangerous than the ones we usually see, especially the ones we see from far away. And so in that sense, the research has to continue, which also means that there are going to be so many more videos coming on this topic in the next few years. All of this research is still relatively new, and there are still so many questions to answer. So on that note, once we do have an answer, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.